Good morning. morning. And welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Welcome to you here in the sanctuary and welcome to everyone who has joined us on Zoom. My name is Lynn Turvey. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm your service leader today. I'm joined by Reverend Rosemary Morrison, whom we will be asking later in this service to officially become our settled minister. Thank you so much to the tech team and to all of the Zoom support people. Uh, Without those people, we would not be having a hybrid service. Your services are very much appreciated. I also want to mention, if there happen to be any new people uh, joining us today, there are cards, welcome cards, out in the foyer. I believe they're on the uh, desk. And we would really appreciate it if you'd take one, fill one out, and leave it there on the desk so that we can get to know you a bit better. Thanks. As Unitarian Universalists, we are bound together, not by a common set of beliefs, but by our promise to support one another in our individual searches for truth and meaning, guided by our principles and drawing from many sources. We begin our gathering acknowledging that we are located on Treaty 6 territory. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. We ask that you quiet any devices you've brought, and we'll create a space in this hour simply to be together in light and love. Now, I think um, Reverend Rosemary has a couple of announcements, and if there are any others, um, perhaps after Rosemary's finished, you may come up. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. You guys look so awesome. Okay, what was I going to say? Um, okay, I'm, I'm the Reverend Rosemary Morrison. It is my pleasure to serve this congregation. Um, this right now is your contract minister, and pretty soon. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that uh, tomorrow morning I am flying to Ottawa to join with the other ministers in Canada at, in, uh, in a retreat centre north of Ottawa until Friday, and then I'll be going to the CUC um, um, annual conference and meeting. So um, I'll be checking my email maybe once or twice a day. If you really need to get a hold of me, uh, talk to Mike. (laughs) I'm kidding. Uh, Not really. Um, Yeah, I might not be very responsive to any any emails or texts or phone calls. And also I wanted to let everyone know that if you would like to uh, become a member, I still have some membership forms here, and at the last Sunday of this month, we're going to have a new to Unitarian Universalism, new to UCE class at, right after the service on the very last Sunday of this month, and I'll be leading that. Those are my announcements. Was there anyone else? Lynn. Just one quick announcement, and that is uh, join us for cake, celebratory cake, after the service in honor of our settled minister. Now, let go of the everyday world and sink into a reverie as we are transported back to Scotland with a tune on Gordon's harp called A Rosebud by my early walk.
I invite Elaine Renard to come forward to light our chalice this morning as I read these words by Leslie Takahashi. On the Brink. All that we have ever loved and all that we have ever been stands with us on the brink of all that we aspire to create. A deeper peace, a larger love, a more embracing hope, a deeper joy in this life we share. Thank you, Elaine. Now, our opening hymn is hymn number 26, Holy, 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 verses 1 and 3. Please rise as you're willing and able. You'll see the words on the screen, hopefully, and they can be found in the gray hymnal as well. Members with me, um, perhaps is there any uh, former United Church of Canada members here? Who remembers singing that at the beginning of every single service? I miss that, <laughs> but sort of. <laughs> I need a page turner. Anybody would like to turn pages for the uh, story by? Sharing our abundance is a wonderful tradition here at UCE. And it's a very important one, too, to this self-supporting church and its ministries. It uh, allows us to grow more generous in spirit and action. Also, one half of the unidentified uh, contributions are given to a worthy organization. And this month, uh, we've chosen, yes, Youth Empowerment and Support Services in Edmonton here. <clears throat> While I provide information about yes, I ask the ushers to begin taking the collection. I think they can. Okay, <laughs> you're still not off the hook. We are going to get something <laughs> for you to pass. Uh, oh, I think we've got some baskets here to use for the time being. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start reading about yes, and we're going to carry on. YES provides immediate and temporary supportive housing and low barrier 24-7 shelter for youth ages 15 to 21 and a drop-in resource center with individualized wraparound support for youth. Over 60,000 meals are served annually to this high needs population. 
YES WORKS COLLABORATIVELY WITHIN A NETWORK OF CARE FOCUSED ON THE PREVENTION OF YOUTH HOMELESSNESS BY PROVIDING YOUTH WITH THE NECESSARY SUPPORTS TO STABILIZE THEIR HOUSING, IMPROVE THEIR WELL-BEING, BUILD LIFE SKILLS, CONNECT WITH COMMUNITY, AND AVOID RE-ENTRY INTO HOMELESSNESS. YES NEEDS $6 MILLION ANNUALLY TO STAY UP AND RUNNING, AND ONE HALF OF THAT AMOUNT COMES FROM DONATIONS. You can visit their website at yess.org to donate directly to this wonderful organization. And um, as the usher brings forward the offering, we will sing together from You I Receive. Well, we'll never meet the budget if we don't put out the collection plates, will we? That was an oops. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll remember next time. Yeah. I invite you to join with me in the spirit of meditation and prayer, quietening our hearts and spirits, whatever word or idea works for you. I invite you to enter into this time with me, whether you're here in the sanctuary, in these chairs, to put your feet on the floor and rest, or if you're with us on ho at home this morning or at a later time, allow yourself to sink into the couch or the chair, big comfy chair, or the bed, the floor, whatever it is that is pulling you down into, towards the earth. I invite you to allow your body to rest. Take a couple of deep breaths. Check in with yourself. Is there some tension in your body somewhere? Is there a blockage as you Breathe the air in. Is there some place that it catches? Attune into that. Allow your attention to heal you. I would like to offer you this prayer called Prayer for All Who Mother by Victoria. Weinstein. We reflect in thanksgiving this day for all those whose lives have nurtured ours, the life-giving ones who feel, heal with their presence, who listen in sympathy, who give wise advice, but only when asked for it. We are grateful for all those who have mothered us, who have held us gently in times of sorrow, who celebrated with us our triumphs, no matter how small, who noticed when we changed and grew, who praised us for taking risks, who took genuine pride in our success and who expressed genuine compassion when we did not succeed. On this day that honors mothers, let us honor all mothers regardless of gender, who from somewhere in their being have freely and wholeheartedly given life 
and sustenance and vision to us. Dear Spirit, God, Holy One, Mother, Father of us all, grant us life-giving ways, strength for birthing and a nurturing spirit, that we may take attentive care of our world, our communities, and those precious beings entrusted to us by biology or by destiny or by friendship, fellowship, or fate. Give us the heart of a mother today. Amen. Let us join together in a few moments of silence, and then we will sing together hymn number 1031, filled with loving kindness. Let's just take a few moments in collective silence. service today is called, entitled, What We Are Creating. And we are indeed creating something wonderful together. So there was this meme going around on Facebook uh, at Christmas time, and it was a picture of the three wise men offering their gifts to the infant in the nativity scene, the infants in the manger, Mary and Joseph, and, and all of the crowds around, and the caption says, just to be clear, this present is for both Christmas and your birthday. <laughs> right? So I can really relate to this as my birthday and Mother's Day are really close together, and all my children and family and former spouse decided that one present or celebration should be sufficient. And I totally do not agree with this sentiment. And although I have had no luck in getting my offspring to agree with me. 
They gave me a phone call on my birthday, though, so that was good. So that's probably why I've decided to move into having a birthday week. It starts kind of before my birthday, and it, and it ends on Mother's Day, so it's kind of still my birthday week. And today is Mother's Day, and we are celebrating so many things. Spring. So I was driving through the River Valley this morning. I was like, okay, now those are some gorgeous shades of green. It's Mother's Day. We will be lighting the new family member candle. And of course, we will be marking the change in our relationship. The one between you and me. Whether you voted yes, or you voted no, or you voted or you abstained from voting when the vote was called to decide whether or not to call me as your settled minister, the fact remains we are entering into a new form of ministry together. There is a significant difference between having a minister on a temporary contract and having a called minister. I like to think of it in a couple of ways, and I'll illustrate both of them. So, you know, you've probably had this experience. You're working in a company or a store or an institution or wherever, but, and you have full-time hours, but you're not a permanent employee. That makes you feel kind of like you're in a tenuous position. You could be let go at any time. First to go, perhaps, when things are a downturn. And then the company offers you a permanent position, and you begin to feel like you can really invest yourself into the company, the university, the church, the corporation, whatever, the store. It's kind of like if you were uh, uh, working in a university as, a, as an instructor. It's kind of going from being a sessional instructor to a tenured professor. There's perks and responsibilities and rights and um, a different relationship. The other way I like to think about it is in the form of a partnered relationship. So when we went through the, the interview process, um, Jennifer Askey was the chair of that, and Mike was on, and Reverend Audrey was on that. Who all was on the search committee that's here today? Mike, Audrey, anyone else? Alan Logan, that's right, yep. So the interview process was kind of like dating, but I didn't really get to meet all of you. I just, you just sent me a representative of representatives of, of who you are. And then we signed the contract, and so that was kind of like going steady. And now, we've sort of decided to get married. Big difference. With it comes the expectation that we're in it for the long haul. If there's problems, we sort them out. We need to figure out how to fight fair, how to get over our disagreements, bring the things up that we don't like and, like, and the things that we do like about one another. We have to figure out our love languages, our tendencies, and how to get things done together. Most people in partnered relationships have set some goals. They know what they want to accomplish. It could be they wish to buy a house and raise a family, or maybe no to kids and instead we're gonna do a lot of traveling, or retire at 55 with a comfortable lifestyle. Moving forward, we need to set some goals too. I have lots of ideas, but that's not how partnerships work. The goals have to be ours together we are going to need to talk about what we want for UCE, how we are going to be together, what systems do we want to put in place, what do we want to keep, what do we want to change, what do we want to let go of. There are some gaps here in the delivering of essential services that need to be addressed, and some of them are being addressed behind the scenes as we speak. The main question 
I would ask, questions I would ask as we begin the work of co-creating are, and you've heard me ask these questions before, who are we? Who are our neighbors? And what are we called to do? One of the reasons I decided to accept this call is because UCE has a tremendous amount of untapped, unrealized potential. I think you can do great things. I think we can do great things together. And I think you can be, we can be an important liberal beacon in this city, province, country. Who are we? Who are our neighbors? And what are we called to do? You have voted yes to calling me as your settled minister. Before we go any further, though, you must know I am not one to accept the status quo. You may have noticed that. We must question, we must shift and change with the times. We must grow in wisdom and influence. If you're wanting a leader that'll help you move forward, then I am excited to do the work with you. If you are wanting a leader that can help you stay exactly where you are, then I'm not your gal. I am planning on accepting this call. The question will be put to me later on in this service. My hope and prayer is that together we will roll up our sleeves and co-create a beautiful and vision-filled congregation. A place where people can feel safe, or at least safer space. Where disgruntled folks feel like they can voice their concern where justice rolls down like waters and peace like an ever-flowing stream in between the disgruntledness. Where people from all walks of life can feel like they belong, that they have community, and that they are worthy of love and belonging and actually feel loved and like they belong, like we belong. This is hard work, and I am excited and ready, willing, and able to put my shoulder to the plow, and I really hope you are too. Church, or congregational life, however you want to say it, is not a spectator sport. We all have gifts. We all can do something, and we need to work together. Even when we make mistakes, even when something doesn't go the way you or I wished it would, even when you're mad at me. I want you to know that I've made a lot of mistakes since I arrived, and I plan on making a whole bunch more. <laughs> I am open to your feedback, even if I might not love it. I am quick to apologize. I feel things deeply, and I love this congregation fiercely. Please join with me in making UCE the best it can be. So may it be. Amen. It is time to share our joys and concerns with one another. There are two candle stations set up for you. You can light a candle or stay in your seat and light, light one in your heart and mind. If you are uh, in at home or uh, please put something in the chat if you would like. Um, this is a time we celebrate, we take a little bit of time out of time and remember who we are, what we love, 
maybe what our sorrows are. I invite you now to come and light a candle if you so desire. And now I ask our service leader, Lynn Turvey, to light a last candle or two of all of the unlit, unspoken, perhaps even un unthought yet, joys and concerns that we hold in our heart.
for all of those, oh, I should have lit a, lit a candle. Lynn will light this for you. Thank you. And now I'd like to call upon um, Gordon to uh, lead us in the new family member candle ritual. It's the green button. <laughs> Press the green button. Good morning, everyone. Well, this is a great honor for me to be uh, taking part in this particular component of our service this morning. Thank you, Reverend Rosemary, for inviting me to do this. I'd like to begin with uh, some words by Alex Hader Winnett, who writes, Every day that a child is born is a miracle, an opportunity to recognize the power of love, a day to give thanks for the beauty of the earth, a day to recognize that no one is brought up alone and that every person born is a savior to the world. This candle before us holds in it many names, blessings, and much love. It was started decades ago and holds a very special place in the history of our church. New parents lit a candle to announce and welcome a new life, not only in our immediate church community, but also into our extended community. The wax from those candles was melted down to form what was a much smaller version of this candle. And like those newborns, it has grown over the years. I would like Reverend Rosemary to come forward and light our candle this morning. And as she does so, I will read words written by Reverend Rosemary. I light this candle to remind us all that there is always new life finding its way to us. This new life appears in many forms. Leaves budding out on the trees, tulips and daffodils pushing their way to the sky and then gracing us with their beautiful blossoms. Seeds are generating, bedding plants hardening off to yield sustenance, and of course, we also welcome new human life, new humans born to our church family. It astounds me how, right from the moment of birth, the infant begins to show us who they are. I was actually surprised when I met my new grandson last February. Oh, I'm getting choked. <laughs> My first grandson, February 24th. Oh, thank you so much. I realized uh, he already had things he liked and things he didn't, but I can guarantee you he instantly liked his grandma very, very much. You can tell as human beings begin to, commu begin to communicate even while they're still in the womb. This candle symbolizes the individuality, richness, and beauty of our new church members. If you have a new family member who's arrived into your life, I invite you to come now and light, um, add some wax to this candle, which is made up of joy and excitement from all the previous new loves in our life. I ask that you tell us your name. Wait, Jan, hold on. We have, an, we have an anxious grandma in the house. I ask that you tell us your name, the name of your new family member, how old they are, and your relationship with them. Then I will invite you to take a candle, light it, and add wax around on the uh, UCE candle, and then add your lit candle back into its holder. Are there any new uh, members that need to be acknowledged, uh, acknowledged this morning? 
oh, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I was so disappointed when we didn't do it at Christmas. And so I insisted we had to do it sometime <laughs> before this child was a year old. So th my name is Jan McMillan. I am the grandma of a Clara Dorothy McMillan. My daughter's name is Jill McMillan, and they live in Victoria. And Clara is now nine months old, and she's just a joy. My five, uh, my three children and my five grandchildren, previous grandchildren, all have wax in this candle. This is my first time to add wax to the candle, and my joy is my dear little grandson, Miles Luca Krenbrink, who lives in Glasgow, Scotland, with his parents, uh, Calvin Krenbrink and Susan. And uh, so I'm going to have to go over there and meet him because virtual hugs just don't do it. <laughs> and what's your name? Well, my name is Gloria Krenbrink. This is hard to do. I'm Paulette Hagar, and uh, I am a great-grandmother to Tilly Jean. And she's kind of a miracle baby. The parents are well into their 30s, wondering if a baby would come along, and it did. And she's a delight. And when she was our daughter, uh, the mother of the baby, on her birthday, she had a doula and a midwife with her, checking her. And they put their stethoscopes on her stomach, and they both looked at each other and said, this baby is singing. And she was born that day. Aww. She was a miracle child, and she's beautiful. My name is Rosemary Falconer, and the baby I'm lighting the candle for technically probably isn't really related to me, but his grandfather lived with us when he was a teenager. And this little boy was born very prematurely. He was in extreme premature. I guess that's a classification. And uh, I know that was November 30th, and he's home. And I know he still has a lot of medical appointments, but one thing he excels at is growing. And he's a very big boy already. My name is Yvonne Merrill, and I'm lighting a candle for my great nephew, Caleb, um, born to my niece, Lana, and her husband, um, whose, name, whose name I know, but <laughs> why can't I think of it? Anyway, um, they live in Cambridge, England.
Yeah, but he has problems. Yeah. His dad's name is Matt. <laughs> So I am going, my name is Rosemary Morrison, and I have two new grandchildren since um, I knew about this. Um, so Theo, uh, Theodore Matthew, which is my son's name, De La Plante, is about three and a half years old. And it is because of him that I am trying to learn French, because he is, he and his father speak French exclusively. And then along came his little brother, Etienne. De la Plante. What's his middle name? David. Etienne David De la Plante. So I put, I'll burn some wax for both of my grandsons. I'll get you to relight Paulette's candle for us as well. You can just relight this one. So we have that one continued to burn. I'm going to ask Reverend Rosemary to light one more candle. This is for all the wee souls yet to be born. May this light guide them on their way as we welcome them in their time into our lives. To the new ones mentioned today and those whose names have been mentioned over the years, I offer you words by Bill Neely. We bless you with fire, this warmth coming from the flame of this candle. May fire bless you with passion and energy May you find callings that feed your spirit, serve the holy, and kindle kindness and compassion in the world. And may all be warmed by your unfolding lives that will spark goodness in the world again and again. May it be so. Blessed be. I think we're going to sing the song. Isn't that right? Isn't that what's next? Coriolis light? Yes. Come sing. I should mention that as we were planning this next event, we asked Reverend Rosemary if there was a particular song that came to mind for her that was particularly special. And so this is um, one of her requests for this morning's service a setting of the 23rd Psalm by Bobby McFerrin.
that adaptation of the 23rd Psalm by Bobby McFerrin never fails to touch my heart. It is a tribute to creativity itself, to take an existing piece of writing and weave into it new and personal threads. It's the evolving nature of what we are creating that is truly fascinating. Nothing really stays the same. And we are all part of the changing environment and its relationships. As my teacher in energy work would say, we are part of a co-creative collaboration, consciously and even within deeper consciousness. We are working together to create this intricate mosaic of our interconnected web. Part of that beautiful mosaic is our UCE community. We are an ever-evolving creation, each of us a very important piece. Reverend Rosemary has been part of that evolution for almost two years now, and we will very soon take part in a sacred covenanting ceremony to mark the changing nature of our growth together. The together part of ministry is what I really love. This short excerpt from words created by Gordon B. McKeeman says it quite well. We who minister speak and live the best we know with full knowledge that it is never quite enough, and yet are reassured by lostness found, fragments reunited, wounds healed, and joy shared. Ministry is what we all do together. I now invite Susan Rattan to tell us a little of Rosemary's life, certainly one filled with much change as she continues to create her path forward. The story of Rosemary. <laughs> it's been a long journey for Reverend Rosemary Morrison. It was decades ago that she first thought of becoming a minister. Now, at last, she has a permanent home as the minister here at UCE. Of course, Rosemary has always had deep ministerial roots. One of her grandfathers and five of her uncles were ministers. But she lived a full and busy life before she got to her chance to become a minister. Rosemary was born Rosemary Smith in Melfort, Saskatchewan, which is a town northeast of Saskatoon. She was the youngest child and only daughter of the family. Her dad farmed and then he sold the farm and ran a motel. When she was 10, the, the Smith family moved to Chilliwack in the lower mainland where her dad again had a farm. She spent a lot of time with two friends who lived across the street from the farm in uh, First Nation. She says she always found a greater acceptance and a better ear from the adults in the First Nation, and so she liked it over there. After high school, Rosemary moved to Edmonton, working here for several years. There she met Miles Morrison, whom she married. They moved to Victoria, then to Kamloops. She was in Kamloops for 30 years, raising her two children, Elizabeth, born in 1984, and Matthew, born in 1991. And she worked all through this time, including 12 years working at a bank. Uh, she didn't love working at the bank, didn't feel it used her talents. In 1993, Rosemary's life changed. Her marriage ended and she went back to school to get her Bachelor of Social Work degree. And in the back of her mind, the idea of becoming a minister started to grow. She had already been an active member of the United Church in Kamloops. She put herself on the mailing list of the Vancouver School of Theology where she could get ministerial training. It took her 20 years to actually get there and by that time, she was a Unitarian. Rosemary married for the second time in 1998, and her new husband was a Unitarian. 
She soon discovered the Unitarians were a better fit for her than the United Church, so she switched. She worked those years in mental health programs and for the local school board. As well, she and her husband fostered 12 special needs children together. She also provided the music for the Kamloops Unitarians for a decade. Her time in Kamloops ended when her second marriage did. In 2010, Rosemary moved back to Victoria, a city she still dearly loves. There she bought a house, fostered four more children on her own, and got serious about being a Unitarian minister. In 2014, she entered the Vancouver School of Theology, living in residence at UBC for part of the time, and in May 2017, she graduated with her Master of Divinity degree. She did her ministerial internship with the Kelowna UU congregation. Then she found a job as an interim minister for the UU Church of Tippecanoe County in Indiana. She was there three years. They taught me how to be a minister and how not to be a minister, she says. Then she went into search mode again, this time determined to find a position in Canada. And she found us, a congregation without a minister which had decided to find a contract minister, not a permanent settled minister. So it was that in 2021, our congregation, exhausted by two years of trying to survive the COVID epidemic without an in-person minister, found Reverend Rosemary, and she found us. As the church started opening that fall, Rosemary was there. And by the next year, it became clear that we needed her not just for a few years, but on an ongoing basis. Edmonton is a good fit for Rosemary. Her daughter Elizabeth lives in Whitehorse with her husband and two young sons. Edmonton is as close as Rosemary can be to reach Whitehorse by plane. Her son Matthew and his partner live in Nelson, BC, which is drivable from Edmonton. And Rosemary is a good fit for us. She's a Western Canadian, so she doesn't see Edmonton as the back of beyond, as some Americans might do. <laughs> she knows we need a lot of help to get back on our feet, and she's not afraid of hard work. So welcome, Rosemary. Is that it? And now, <laughs> Mike Keast will come up and lead us in the congregational responses. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> so, quick little wedding ceremony, I mean, joining ceremony, and we're good. <laughs> The following words of Erica A. Hewitt. To be a Unitarian Universalist means we'll never be done with the work. The work of telling the truth about oppression, the work of resisting any laws, policies, or practices that deny anyone their humanity, the work of stubbornly seeking out the spark of the divine in each other, no matter what the work of creating heaven on earth. To be a Unitarian Universalist also means we're not alone in the work. We are not alone because of our promises to love one another, we are not alone because we are companions on the journey. This morning, we request that Reverend Rosemary Morrison lead us in our individual and collective faith journeys as our newly settled minister. Reverend Rosemary, it is with great joy that we welcome you as a settled minister to this congregation. With a deep sense of responsibility, we, the members of the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, while adhering to our eight principles, and working towards living into covenant, pledge to give you our best in word and deed, to listen to and be responsive and respectful of your concerns, to honor your experience and celebrate our achievements together as we strive to make the Unitarian Church of Edmonton a vibrant, welcoming, and safe space for all who enter our doors. Do you, while adhering to our eight principles, pledge to give your best to this community in word and deed, to listen to and be responsible responsive and respectful 
of our concerns, to honor our experience, and celebrate our achievements while we strive to make the Unitarian Church of Edmonton a vibrant, welcoming, and safe space for all who enter our doors. Yes, I do. To the members and friends of UCE, we have chosen to ask Reverend Rosemary to be our settled minister. We have said we wish to have an ongoing and covenant-centered relationship with her. Please, response, please respond yes after every question. <laughs> because you have to do some work too. Do you promise to do your best to support the minister and ministries of this congregation with your time, talent, and financial support? Yes. Ooh, nice response. <laughs> do you promise to ask questions when you don't understand and bring concerns quickly to the minister when you have them? Yes. Are you willing to do your best to develop a healthy relationship with our settled minister and with this congregation? Reverend Rosemary Morrison, do you accept this call to be UCE's settled minister? Yes, didn't I already say that? <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> be a lot of work we went through if you said no. But. <laughs> a settled ministry means we are in this together, that we realize that if we want this to be successful, we will have to work at it. Mistakes will be made, laughter will be heard, crying will probably happen, and just like any relationship, it will evolve and grow as we do. With joy, I wish to announce that you see and Reverend Rosemary, I mean, that Reverend Rosemary is now our next settled minister. <laughs> I uh, would invite Gordon Ritchie, Chair of the Church Services Committee, to give Reverend Rosemary a token of our ever-blossoming relationship. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. What a lot of work. What a lot of time we've put in. We've had conversations after church. There's been surveys and this and that, and, and we did it. So congratulations to you two for going through this process. It wasn't easy, and it was worthwhile, I think. So thank you very much. And let's sing ourselves out. Uh, when our heart is in a holy place, hymn number 1008, please rise in body or in spirit as you are able.
Come forward and extinguish our chalice flame while I read these words by Reverend Scott Taylor. The call and blessing of creativity. May the call of creativity arise again from within. May your own creative unfolding leave you in awe. May the beauty that has blessed you lead you to create beauty for those you love and those you do not know. May the creativity that arises between us help to birth the world anew. So I'm in the middle of learning a new benediction, memorizing it, but it's not quite there. So I'll just use the one. We will together use the one that we have become familiar with and found comfort in. And I say to you, do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things can break and all things can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So I invite you this Mother's Day to go and love intentionally. I invite you on this beautiful spring day to love unconditionally and with all of your heart, love extravagantly. Go in peace, gentle people, go in peace. And now let us sing our linking song. And there is cake, don't forget. <laughs> Carry the flame. <laughs>